A 17-year-old Maria Vdovuchenko went through Russian filtration when she left Mariupol with her family. During the interrogation, she was hinted at rape and her father was severely beaten. At first, they told him, how about we cut off your ear, what will you do? Then they started pushing, my dad didn't know what to do. He kept silent and listened to what they told him, and when they hit him hard on the head, he couldn't remember what happened there. Maria's family left at the camp, but those who were in front of them were not so lucky. A husband and wife came in front of us. They stayed there for about 20 minutes. When he came out alone waiting for his wife, they said the woman did not pass the filtration. She remained here. He cried he didn't know what to do next. Those who did not pass the filtration are sent to filtration colonies again. The fate of those who got there is unknown for relatives. Nothing is known about those who were sent to filtration prisons. Another element of the repressive machine that the Russian invaders deployed in the temporarily occupied territories of Ukraine. The worst situation is with filtration prisons. We know of at least four that operate on the territory of the Donetsk region. These are two prisons in Olenivka, 120th colony, where prisoners of war are held except for civilians, and 54th or 52nd strict regime colony. The situation there is much worse than in Olenivka, and there is also the Donetsk pretrial detention center, along with isolation prison. In total, the Russians set up 21 filtration camps in the Donetsk region. Schools, markets, prisons are used for it. They are in terrible conditions. They keep Ukrainian civilians. People are held there. They are taken for interrogations from time to time. They are beaten, treated very badly. There is no medical care. One of such camps is located near Mariupol, the village of Bezumene. It is known that about 2,000 men were held here, mainly from Mariupol. The smell here is worse than in the toilet, because there are sick and people with disabilities here. One tap for 350 people, or even more. How people survive in such conditions is difficult to imagine. The Yale University experts studied satellite images of these camps and found graves near the filtration colony in Olenivka, where Ukrainian servicemen were also held. The satellite photo was taken before the occupiers blew up the building and killed the Ukrainian soldiers. How many people are held in such camps? It is unknown, as well as how many Ukrainians did not survive the torture of the Russian invaders. This is a real concentration camp where men are kept together with women. People who have been convicted, criminals, have been specially transferred there. There is not even a hint of civilization. The idea of forming filtration camps was planned. This is not some kind of self-activity, this is a planned action. Mariupol residents are held like in prison, this is almost isolation. Yale University experts confirmed that the system of filtration camps was planned in the Kremlin several weeks before a full-scale invasion of Ukraine. The U.S. State Department has already reacted to this report. Once again, we call on Russia to immediately stop the filtration and force deportation operations. President Putin and his government will not be able to engage in these constant abuses with impunity. Responsibility is necessary, and the United States, together with partners, will not remain silent. The people of Ukraine deserve justice, and the United States will remain united with them as long as necessary. From the statement of the U.S. Department of State. This report will be another piece of evidence for international courts about Russia's war crimes. All those involved will be punished. Reported by Ksenia Buhai, Ksenia Barvinenko, UATV News.